Hey, how's it going? Alex here from Ideaspot, and in today's WordPress tutorial, you're going to learn how to set up the Updraft Plus WordPress Backup Plugin. Updraft Plus is just an excellent WordPress backup solution. So lots of these uh, organizations, the NBA, Microsoft, Cisco, they're using Updraft Plus for their WordPress backups. The free version is excellent and the premium version gives you even more. But today I'm just going to go through the free version. So if this sounds interesting, keep watching. First thing we'll do from our WordPress dashboard is head over to plugins and click add new. We are going to search for the word backup here and you'll see that Updraft Plus has 2 million active installations and a five star rating from nearly three and a half thousand reviews. So excellent performance from Updraft Plus. You'll notice that Jetpack has more, but 5 million is only because Jetpack is automatically installed with heaps of different WordPress uh, installations. So. I don't think that really counts. I think this is probably the most popular and um, most actively used backup solution. There's also Back WP Up, which is a pretty cool little simple one. Um, more than half a million people using this one still. And I still like this one in some cases as well. But in this case, let's go ahead and let's install Updraft Plus. And when that's finished installing, just click activate. So now you'll get your plugin activated message there. You'll also get the Updraft Plus option in your header menu there and you can scroll down to settings. Let's click on the settings and set this thing up. So you'll notice we have a little welcome message here. The welcome message basically says, if you wanna make a backup, go to backup and click backup now. But otherwise, go to the settings tab and we can change the settings and that will decide what is backed up, where it's backed up and how it's backed up. So let's work on that right now. So the two most important choices are the files backup schedule and the database backup schedule. So both of these are set to manual at the moment. And this is how many copies of the backups they'll keep. So we'll want to make some choices here. So the files backup, that's all the files in your media, your posts, all your plugins, everything, all the files, and it can add up to a lot of space. So I normally just like to do that monthly and only keep two copies of it. And it depends on your hosting and how fast everything is, but you could keep more copies of it if you have lots of storage space, for example. But I think two is fine for the files and the database backup schedule. I like to do that much more often. So if you're updating weekly, I'd, I'd um, take a backup weekly. If you're updating almost every day or every couple of days, do a daily backup and you'll want to keep uh, a lot of these backups because they're not very big. They might only be a few megabytes or a few tens of megabytes. So um, you can keep plenty of these. So let's say we were doing weekly. We could keep we could keep um, a whole year worth and keep 52. And there's no problem with that. Uh, there's That doesn't really take up that much space in this day and age. So um, make that a pretty big number. The reason that might uh, uh, be good to have a big number there is because you might notice something that's been on the website for a long time and you might need to roll way back to um, get rid of it from the website. So if you've got a whole year's worth of backups, that gives you a much uh, higher chance of uh, um, preventing anything that's been sitting around on the um, website for a long time and needs to be removed. When you've decided which schedule you'd like to use with those um, timings, just scroll down and then click Save Changes. And there we go your settings have been saved. Now the next step is kind of important. So you can choose where you'd like to store your backups. So there's lots of different offsite storage solutions. Um, probably the easiest one to set up is a Dropbox and you can do this to other, other methods as well. There's Amazon S3, Rackspace, FTP, e email, but I wouldn't recommend trying to back up your site by email. It's not, the chance of it working is very small, um, but I'd like to use Dropbox. The free version um, covers only a few of these, but uh, the paid version gives you all of these options. So I think Google Drive's in our free version as well, if you'd like to use that one. Um, but this one or that one is probably good to um, when you're just starting out. So let's just go with Dropbox for today. So I just clicked on Dropbox and now let's scroll down a little bit and it's gonna say here, authenticate with Dropbox. So ensure you're logged into the correct account before continuing and after you've saved your settings by clicking save changes below. So that is there, save changes below. Um, then come back here once and follow the link to complete authentication with Dropbox. So I'm gonna go over to Dropbox here. I'm gonna sign in. I'm just gonna sign in with my uh, Google account. So I've got my Ideaspot class Google account for this tutorial. 
So there we go, I've logged into my Dropbox. Let's go back to this setup. So uh, after you've saved your settings by click Save Settings below. So let's go ahead and do that. Click Save Changes. There we go, you've selected Remote Storage option which has authorization step to complete. So follow this link to authorize access to Dropbox and you'll not be able to back up to Dropbox without it. So let's click this link. Hopefully this works. So we'll just wait a minute for this to activate and it's gonna say Updraft Plus would like to access its own folder in Dropbox. So um, apps updraftplus.com inside your Dropbox. So you can click that to learn more, but just click allow from here. So that should go okay. You'll get this completion message here and then you go ahead and click complete setup. So that should bring us back. So there we go, we're back on our dashboard and you've got this little success message. You've authenticated your account with Dropbox and your Dropbox account's name is there and your Dropbox quota usage is 7.9 used and I've got two, or another two gigabytes available. So that's just a free Dropbox account. You're not gonna be able to back up a very big website with a free Dropbox account, but a small blog, it'd probably be okay. Um, you could keep a couple copies of the blog and a few copies of the database just fine. So I think the settings I've got will work okay in this scenario. So let's go back to settings. I think this would probably be okay for a very small website. If you had a, a bigger website, you may not be able to do the file backup, but you can still do the, the database backup. So you do just do a manual file backup or use another program like all-in-one migration and keep a copy of your files somewhere else. So up to you. I think I'm pretty happy with a small website doing this monthly and just getting two copies of it. I think that'll work just fine. So I've got Dropbox there, that's all been set up. You want to include all the files in your backup, plugins, themes, uploads, any directories found inside WP content, and basically leave this default is what I'm saying. Now you can get a little email notification if you'd like when the backup happens, it'll tell you by email. Um, I don't really want any more emails that I'm already getting, so I'm gonna leave it unchecked, but if you'd like that, go ahead and check that. Um, show expert settings to search some further options. Don't bother unless you have a problem or are curious. I think, let's just leave that for now. I think I've been happy with just using this and I've had good success. So um, you can also get more storage for Dropbox. It's not very expensive if you like using this setup. Otherwise you could try Google Drive. I think Google Drive gives you um, some more storage than Dropbox. So that those are the two I think that I'd probably go for if you're, a, if you're new and starting out. And if you're more of an enterprise uh, or a developer level solution, then you could go for some of these um, more professional options. But I think for a hobbyist, try out this first, maybe try Google Drive, but Dropbox works quite well in my experience. Now let's go ahead and look at some of these advanced tools. So most of this stuff, you're not gonna to need to ever look at. The few things that I like are the site size. It's gonna count up your site. I haven't done a backup yet, so it doesn't have the numbers here yet. And import and export settings can be handy if you've got lots of different WordPress sites and you'd like to copy the settings. You can export the settings and import the settings file. So you don't have to set this up every single time. You can also wipe the settings. If you've got some problems, maybe a backup froze or your server crashed and you need to wipe the settings, you can go ahead and do that here. But for the most part, you're never gonna need any of these advanced tools uh, in most cases. Now for this tutorial, let's go ahead and just run a manual backup. All you have to do to run a manual backup is just click backup now and it will say, uh, it'll say these things may not be saved, that's cool. Um, let's go ahead and include your database in the backup, include your files in the backup, send this backup to remote storage. So let's do all these things. And you can say only allow this backup to be deleted manually. So the retention list limits, like we set two uh, copies of the files and 52 copies of the database, you could ignore those limits and uh, if you just wanted to keep this specially, but I think let's just leave it at that. So now it's gonna say requesting the start of backup and it's gonna start backing up. And this can take a few minutes, so just be patient while this runs. After a while, the backup will complete. It'll completely upload to Dropbox. You'll get this message. The backup apparently succeeded and is now complete. You can check that in Dropbox as well. You have some backup files that pop up here. They'll be called backup and uh, they'll be sitting there in your uh, Dropbox or Google Drive or whichever method that you've selected to do this. Now we did a complete backup, but in most cases, when something goes wrong, you don't need to restore the complete website. All you need to restore is the database. So I'm gonna give a little bit of a demonstration of what restoring a website is. 
So for this demo, I just made a quick database backup just by itself, but by going to backup now and click to include database in the backup and backup now, I ended up with just this one. It's now, it's not on Dropbox, it's just locally on the website. So it's a bit quicker to do this demonstration, but you could do it from here as well. If you wanted to, you just click restore and then highlight the things that you need to restore. So you want your database, others, uploads, themes. You could select all of them and then click next and go through the install process and that will restore your whole website. But that does take a little bit of a while, uh, wait. So I'm just gonna do a demonstration of what it's like to recover a website. So for this demo, I've got uh, a nice little template website that I just installed with Astra and the starter templates. And I'm just gonna mess this site up. So here we are in Elementor, let's just go ahead and break it. So let's go ahead and just put some some garbage here. Let's get this image and let's uh, get rid of the image, shall we? Grab some random thing. There we go. Let's hit update. There we go. Wait for that to update. Let's go back to our main site and reload. See what it looks like now. Should be all messed up. There we go. You might know. Oh no, it's all it's all broken. Well, we could easily uh, restore this with the Updraft database uh, restore. So let's go back to our Updrafts. Um, we've got our database here. Let's click a restore. And in this case, it's only the database, so we can only click the one button. And then let's click next, and it will prepare the backup files. And it will say it's been successfully processed. Now press restore to proceed, so click restore. And now we just have to wait. You get to watch the activity log here, so it's gonna show you the little console, and it's gonna progress through the database tables. There it goes. And it will say restore successful. And then we can return back to the updraft plus configuration. So we can click that and that will take us back. So here we go, it's gonna say that we uh, restored some rows in the database, your backup has been restored. Let's go ahead and look at the site. And here we go, the site is back to normal. We had the messed up site here, we can reload the messed up site and it should be back to normal. So very, very easy to recover from any mishaps you might have or any um, broken software that you might install or any infections, you can just roll back to Back when times were good, you can just go back to that point. And most times, it's just a matter of rolling back the database. Most times, you don't need to restore all your plugins and themes and uploads. Most times, all that was changed was the database. But uh, if you've installed some um, some software that's broken WordPress, you may need to uh, restore plugins and themes. But in most cases, uh, in my experience, restoring a database is... Um, set everything back to how it should be. So hopefully that's been useful. If you've uh, managed to try this out and you like it, give me a thumbs up and definitely subscribe. I'm going to come back with other ways to do uh, site migrations, backups, and other security tips for WordPress just to keep your data safe. So I mean, I hope it's been useful. Um, make sure you subscribe, as I said before, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.